Sharpie the Penguin is an awesome game series, but it gets like no recognition outside of its home site Scratch, so I'm here to give it some love. Sharpie is awesome. The games are awesome, the music is awesome, the art is awesome, and the creator, the updater, is definitely awesome. So in this video, I'm going to shed some light on some of the most awesome moments in the series. Before we begin, hit the awesome subscribe button to be awesome, and major spoiler warning. I will be discussing in depth this very story-based series. I strongly recommend you experience it for yourself. Playing the series really doesn't take long if you know how to do it quickly. Play Chirpy Story and Deluxe, read the Chirpy 2 and 3 sections of Chirpy A Summary, then play 4 or 5, or watch playthroughs of them online. Maybe someday I'll make a comprehensive explanation of the story in these games to assist with people trying to watch my Chirpy videos, because I think there are a lot more coming. But now isn't the time for that. Now is the time for... Number 10. The Good Ending of Chirpy Reverie Chirpy Reverie is a great game with a great ending. You did it. You've gone through hell and back, using Chirpy, Eren, Ignis, even Fearless, Cheapy, and Phoebe to an extent. Now it's done. You can finally move on. While I don't think Echoes of a Hopeful Future, the music playing right now, is as good a song as the credits theme, the good and hopefully true ending of Chirpy the Penguin 5 is a truly satisfying closure to a phenomenal game. Moving straight from the last game to the first, or at least the remake of it, the Christopher vs. Flawless Demon battle at the end of Chirpy the Penguin Deluxe was phenomenal. Christopher is a man, or rather a penguin, who has endured a ridiculous amount of suffering at the hands of the evil Flawless Demon. At this point, my guy has had enough, and is ready to throw purple bullet-shaped hands with this trick, and it is a sight to behold. The demon clearly underestimates Chris, as his battle isn't nearly as difficult as rematches with him in later games. This is a mistake, as the demon is absolutely wrecked while Hyperzone 2 from Kirby's Dream Land 3 blares in the background. Also, the way that the demon uses its own flesh as walls to come down on Chris is absolutely disgusting, and I love it. However, this battle is to no avail, as Christopher only kicks the demon out of his mind before promptly becoming possessed. A real shame. I sure hope Christopher is able to have a happy moment where he gets his revenge in the future. <laughs> <laughs> At the number 8 spot, I've placed the Flawless Demon Chase from Chirpy 3 Mirror Worlds. Picture this, you've just beaten an extremely difficult boss with a BANGER soundtrack. You just saw a heartwarming cutscene before this jerk stole it all away. And now, all you can do is run. At this moment in time, you cannot fight this creature. No one can. While this final platforming challenge may not be difficult, your nerves will be shot at this point. If you die, it's back to the start of the level, so don't screw this up. Moving on, number 7 goes to an incredibly hype moment that is given a major boost by the music playing in the background, a luxury that a few other moments do not have. For anyone who isn't seeing the screen, I am talking about the Ember battle from Chirpy 4 Heart of the Mast, Part 1, Phoebe's Story. That's a long name, maybe I should just say Heart of the Mast from now on. But that aside, Ember is the villainous hyena that's been stealing magical crowns and harassing Phoebe and her friends since almost the beginning of Phoebe's story. And while to the average player that isn't long, Phoebe and her friends have had enough. They've arrived to deliver Ember her final kick in the Gluteus Maximus. You enter the final room of Chaos Crown 2 to find complete darkness, with two glowing yellow eyes staring down at you. Soft piano music begins playing as you dodge Ember's familiar projectiles. But it all feels too easy and then the drums kick in. The screen lights up, Ember starts leaving a rainbow trail behind her like Azrael Dreamer's final form, and the real battle begins. On your first attempt, you will panic, and you will die a painful death that in some way involves these rotating lasers, but after a while, the music begins to lose its momentum, and so does Ember. She grows tired, and realizes the power of the magical crown was just too much for her. Ember's flame has finally been extinguished. Not that she's dead or anything, she's just less powerful now. On the subject of power though, what makes you feel more powerful than your first S plus in Chirpy Reverie? Chirpy Reverie is a game all about speedrunning. Memorization. Don't hold right when you enter this room, or you'll screw it up and suddenly it's a failed attempt. If you want to get an S plus, everything needs to be near perfect. You aren't holding right when you start the level? S rank. You jump a little too early and accidentally backflip? S rank. You didn't memorize when each room takes place and what to do in them? S-Rank. 
but when you get everything just right and meet the time limit unique to each level and the death limit zero, you've done it. That's an S+, and it feels so good. I remember when I got my first S+. It was a Monday, in March or April of 2023 if I had to guess. I got an S plus on Sunset Shores within a relatively short amount of time. The next day at school, all I could think about was how I wanted to S plus Urban Thicket and then every other level in the game. I proceeded to roll over my own fingers so it turned purple and could barely move. I still tried it, and I managed to be one second away from the S plus ring. I can always blame it on the purple finger. Entering the top 5 Chirpy the Penguin moments, we have Everyone vs. the Flawless Demon from Heart of the Mask. Now, Heart of the Mask used to be my least favorite of the series, but that was only because A, I was a wimp who couldn't handle the difficulty of the first two levels, and B, I hadn't played Mirror Worlds yet. God, I hate Mirror Worlds. Anyway, Chirpy 4 is my absolute favorite in the series, and while its ending may be a little too confusing for my tiny brain, the battle directly preceding it is hype as hell. The music is super fitting. Every character gets their time to shine, except Cheapy, Felix, and the Phoebe Story Gang. And of course, the amazing cutscene where Chirpy wakes up just through sheer willpower to avenge his brother. This is one of my favorite Chirpy bosses, and one of my favorite final bosses in any game ever. Next, we have a moment I really can't think of a transition for. It's the flooding back segment from level 5 of Chirpy Reverie. You just beat one of the hardest bosses of the game, before getting betrayed by someone you thought was your only friend in this strange new world. Now it's just Chirpy, Eren, and the Void of the Forgotten. As they journey through some very familiar level design, seemingly to no avail, Chirpy stumbles upon a very familiar face. It's Fearless Bot, one of Chirpy's closest friends. Together, the band of three strange animals realizes they can do the impossible. They can escape the bottom of the world. The music kicks in. It is the most uplifting, hype-bringing, you-can-do-anything song in the game. And just as the melody kicks in, if you time it perfectly, you switch from playing as Dashless Chirpy to playing as Eren. You have no idea how utterly shocked I was when this happened on my first playthrough. Maybe I should have expected it. But for it to be this big a deal, for the moment to be such a turning point, I never could have predicted that. This moment, and the track flooding back, live rent-free in my head. And I love it. Surprisingly, yes. This series does get better than flooding back. And even surprisinglier, my third favorite moment from the series is from Chirpy 3 Mirror Worlds. I'm talking about the Christopher name reveal. Now, I already mentioned the flawless demon chase that takes place not too long after this, but I definitely enjoyed this more. The entirety of the first three games, the player is led to believe that evil Chirpy is just that, some evil guy who happens to be Chirpy's brother. But after beating the crap out of him for the third time, we find, uh, we find out he did nothing wrong. Evil Chirpy just had this jerk in his head, and then he says it. Now, I'll always be evil Chirpy, and not Christopher. In probably the best way possible, the updater revealed one of my favorite characters in the series. This is probably the moment that made me wish I had played the series from the beginning, rather than starting with Reverie and reading Chirpy as summary. While this moment didn't hit me as hard as it should have, I have to acknowledge that it was absolutely shocking. Second best moment in the series, for me, has to be the bad ending from Chirpy Reverie. Ever since you beat Static Mind and the real game started, you've been going through all the EX levels and getting static shards and wanting to throw your computer at a wall, all so you can finally eradicate the static and move on to the new world. But Chirpy makes an awful decision. Or rather, you make an awful decision. Chirpy is no longer in control, because what he wants is to move on. What you want is more. More levels, more bosses, more difficulty. So you don't move on. You can't. You try everything, and eventually, you punch just the right wall. Or, the wrong one. You're taken to Persister's Path, the borderline impossible final level in the game. This takes everything you know, plus some things you had probably never heard of yet, and puts it all to the test in the least fair way possible. You're not supposed to beat Persister's Path. You're supposed to give up, move on, and get the good ending with Ignis and Eren. But if you really live up to the name of the level, you make it. 
you get to the end. And this is where Ignis and Erin realize what's up. All the static shards you've been collecting have taken Chirpy over. You've taken Chirpy over. You move through Chirpy, and now the static moves through you. Ignis and Erin fuse together, bringing Erin to her strongest state, Flawless Erin. This was the state she used to defeat Static Mind. She can do it again. Except, if you just keep going, she doesn't. You win. The Static wins. Erin is dead, and Chirpy is just too far gone. This is where you come across the bad ending. The Static creates the worst possible future for this world, a generic cube platformer. I'm not very good with metaphors and symbolism and stuff, but it seems to me like the static represents the updater's fanbase on Scratch, or possibly the Scratch gaming community as a whole. They always want more, and it all ends up the same. A dark purple cube with one eye jumping over spikes while party music plays in the background. The bad ending of Chirpy Reverie is just one giant screw you to the updater's fans. In concept, it's hilarious. In execution, it's genuinely chilling. This series can be freaking terrifying when it wants to be, and nothing shows that better than my number one pick. My absolute favorite moment in the Chirpy the Penguin series was something I had decided on from the moment I had the idea of this script. I'm gonna draw out this introduction for suspense. So, you just beat the hardest non-expert level in the game. You then kinda fought a really hard boss, but it basically just consists of dodging while Eren beats it up. Then your old friend Ignis comes back. He joins forces with Chirpy and Eren, they gain their flawless forms, although that moment was a long time coming, and they fly off to fight their last foe, the Static Mind. As one of my favorite tracks in the game, Five Stars starts blasting the background. Then, you hit this creature one time too many. The screen fades to black, the music stops, and all you hear is the sound of waves crashing on a beach. Then you see him. It's Christopher. He's somehow back. This is where my absolute favorite moment happens. Christopher tries to convince Chirpy to stay. They don't have to move on. They can be together forever in this world. But Chirpy knows better. Christopher can't be back. He died before Chirpy's eyes only a few years ago. Then, Christopher begins to change. He morphs into Static Mind with that crisp Chirpy Reverie animation style we all know and love. Then it's back to the battle. Why do I love this moment so much? It is absolutely chilling to watch. Shivers went down my spine as I saw this, and I will never forget the shock I had when the illusion transformed into Static Mind's true form. Some people might disagree, but for me, this will always be the best moment in the series. That's the video. Be sure to comment below how absolutely awful and disagreeable all of my opinions are. Like the video if you thought it was cool. Dislike it if you think Evil Chirpy's introduction from Chirpy 1 should have been on the list. Subscribe if you want to see more Chirpy videos, and have a great day. This is Jaren's 10 signing off.